Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Aaron Newcomb joins me. We're going to be talking about a painting program called Krita. Makes really cool stuff. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Aaron Newcomb. Episode 324, recorded February 4th, 2015. Krita. This episode is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to upgrade your IT skills or prepare for certification? IT Pro TV offers engaging and informative tutorials streamed to your Roku, computer, or mobile device. For a free seven-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account, go to ITProTV slash Floss and use the code FLOSS30. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, bringing you each week the movers, the shakers, the big projects, the little projects, projects you may be using every day, but you might not know that you're using it every day, projects you might not have ever heard of, but want to go download right after the show. It sort of sounds like that at the beginning of every show, and it's not exactly a script, you know, I make that up sort of every time. Bringing, uh, joining me today is my wonderful and talented co-host, Aaron Newcomb. Aaron, welcome back to the show. Hey, Randall, I don't believe you make it up every time. You're reading that off a cue card. I know you you are. I am not. I am not. That's actually <laughs> one of the few things I don't have written down over here. I, I write the uh, opening for the, the tag opening, but that's it. That's the only thing I write. So everything else is just live. We'll do it live. Actually, um, actually, I think for viewers, of the regular viewers, listeners, whatever, uh, of the show, I think that they know um, the, the amount of times that we mess up trying to do the opening and stuff. They, <laughs> they know it's not, you know, you just have to watch or listen a couple times. You know it's not, uh, you know, it's, written it's, down anywhere. No, absolutely not. No, we, we make this up as we go along, and, and often uh, I stumble over trying to like bring you on or something like that. It's just a little crazy stuff. Well, enough about us. Uh, uh, for those of you that are watching the live stream, you may recognize that green tree behind me again. Uh, for those of you that are watching on video, you might recognize it as well. I guess it's not just a live stream. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm back at ZipRecruiter headquarters in downtown Santa Monica. I'll be here for three weeks. You'll see this three times in a row. Um, and uh, very happy to be in Santa Monica again. It's a f one, one of our area to uh, go shopping and uh, not shopping, but eating because there's so many restaurants around here and where are you speaking to us oh i guess we can kind of tell where you're speaking to us from right aaron oh yeah i'm here at the brick house of course Aaron at the brick house very yeah. good where i was uh was it three weeks ago no four weeks ago four weeks we had ago now we had the wonderful uh, New Year's Eve uh, celebration and uh, actually a couple of segments for that uh, that broadcast. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So anyway, enough about us. We have a wonderful guest today uh, talking about a wonderful project that I just recently found out about. It's called Krita, um, which is a paint program. So it's sort of like the GIMP, but a whole lot better, uh, as far as I can tell from looking at uh, having seen the GIMP. I haven't seen the GIMP recently, though, so I can't compare it to head-to-head -to -head with that. We'll have to ask our guest what he thinks about that. But we're going to bring on, I'm going to mangle this name, sorry, um, Bodwin Remt. He's a Dutch name because he's from the Netherlands. And uh, he has basically been shepherding the project since 2004. He sort of took it over when it uh, sort of got a little uh, slow on everybody else developing it. And he's done some amazing work with it. As I was going through the show notes this morning, uh, prepping for this, it was, um, I, I started playing some of the videos and I went, oh my goodness, this is just like, you know, this is this is better than Photoshop in some ways. And we'll have to get into that about uh, talking about features that are unique to Krita. Uh, what do you know about Krita there, uh, Aaron? Uh, almost nothing, actually. I, I haven't used it before. I, I'm going to load it, actually, as we're, as we're talking right now and you know, put it through its paces a little bit. Um, but I'm excited about it because, you know, after I heard that we were doing the episode, all of a sudden I started reading these things about it. And maybe, I don't know, just because it wasn't like in my mindset or something, I wasn't paying attention to it. Uh, but as soon as we started, as soon as I recognized the name, maybe that's what it was. I just didn't recognize yeah. it. Then I started saying, oh, yeah, there's the big three. There's uh, GIMP, Inkscape, and Krita. It's Krita or Krita. I don't know. We'll have to ask we'll, that, We'll too. find out. But, the, you know, you, you start reading those things, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, maybe I should have been paying attention to this a little bit more closely. I do use GIMP. Uh, I, don't, I don't use Photoshop. Uh, GIMP is my primary <laughs> image editor, and uh, Inkscape as well for vector graphics if I need to do that. I've been spending a lot more time in, in uh, Inkscape lately. So I'm excited to hear what the differences are and maybe if there's, you know, ways to do things simpler, quick, more quickly, whatever. You know, some of the things that I do in GIMP, they just seem like they take a long 
time. I should be able to script those or something um, and just say, okay, go do these five things to this image and ha just have it done. Um, and I'm sure there probably are ways to do that. But so I'm excited to see what the differences are for sure. Yeah, and I also want to warn people, this is probably going to be a fairly uh, somewhat visual show. We'll actually have some uh, things in the video stream. So if you're listening to this on the audio feed, you might want to stop and go down to the twit.tv website and pick up the video feed instead because you know, I think you get a little bit, just a tell a tiny bit more out of the show. So that's good. But before we get started, before we bring on our host, or no, <laughs> before we bring on our host, <laughs> before we bring on the guest, that's who we're bringing on. We already have the host. I have a very important message today. So uh, this uh, this week's episode is brought to you by IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV is a video network dedicated exclusively to the world of information technology. Whether you're looking to jumpstart a career in IT or you're already working in the field, IT Pro TV su supplements traditional learning methods in a fun and engaging way to maximize your learning and prepare you for certification. IT Pro TV offers hundreds of hours of content with 30 hours being added each week. Their library includes video courses on Microsoft, Cisco, Apple, A+, CCNA, Security+, MCSA, CISSP, PowerShell and Linux Plus. Covering topics like network security, Linux, Windows, OS 10 support for or desktop, servers, and more, but IT doesn't have to be boring. IT Pro TV hosts tell engaging stories and share personal experiences to increase your retention. Shows are streamed live and available on demand worldwide to your Roku, computer, and mobile devices. Chromecast, too. And you can interact with hosts during the show and topic-specific web-based Q&As. If this sounds familiar, it's because the guys behind IT Pro TV are huge fans of Twit. They have over 10 years of experience in IT learning and were inspired by Leo. They use the same studio setup and equipment that we do. Even if you're already studying a book or enrolled in certification or technical degree program, this is a fantastic supplement to learn at your own pace and track your progress. Measure up practice exams are also included with your submission, as well as the virtual machine sandbox lab environments for hands-on practice and learning with HTML5 support for any OS. You get this all for one low monthly price, which includes daily updates and new features monthly. It's comparable to the cost of a study guide and much cheaper than going to IT Bootcamp. Check out itpro.tv slash floss to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications recognized by employers. You're going to get a free seven-day trial when you sign up using our code, which will allow you to check out their courses, live stream, and more. Subscriptions are normally $57 per month or $570 for the entire year. But we have a special offer because they're huge fans of Twit. If you sign up now and use the code FLOSS30, you'll receive 30% off your subscription for the lifetime of your account. That's less than $40 per month or $399 for the entire year. And once you reach your 13th month, they will reduce your subscription rate even further, bringing your cost down to $24.95 per month or $249 for the entire year. That's IT Pro dot tv slash f l o s s and use the code floss 30 to try it free for seven days and save 30 percent we thank it pro tv for their support of floss weekly and now let's go ahead and bring on our guests welcome to the show hi great to be hey. here cool and where are you speaking to us from I'm in the Netherlands. I'm in a small provincial town. It's called Deventer. It's really small, just about 50,000 inhabitants. And would you go ahead and say your name? Because I didn't want to mispronounce it one more time. <laughs> Bader and Rent. Very good. Very good. Well, yes, the, very good. And uh, so uh, we sort of gave our view of what we believe, Krita, and also you can tell us how to pronounce that if I, we get it wrong there. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give us the 30,000 foot view? What is this software and what uh, problems is it solving? Uh, right now, Krita is, is created to uh, help people create new images from scratch. So uh, where GIMP is an application you would use if you have a bunch of images and want to edit them or create some graphics for the web or uh, maybe do some collage stuff, uh, Krita is meant to sit down with a blank piece of screen and start painting. Start sketching, develop your sketch into an image, and then develop your image into something that you can, can, can use as a book illustration, as a matte painting, uh, as a comic book. So it's, 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 it's really a creative application. And, and as such, I think it, it sort of complements uh, GIMP. GIMP will have more filters. We will have more brush and, 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 and more tools that make painting easier. So would this be closer than, I'm trying to think of the commercial world equivalent of it. Um... And this would be closer to, I guess, uh, not Illustrator, or would that no. be a good... Uh, Illustrator no. is vector stuff. Okay. Um, uh, well, the, you could say it's closest to 
uh, coral painter. But then coral painter is a bit of a special thing because it does all this natural media emulation that that uh, many artists think is really unproductive because it's it's not predictable what you're doing. So we got a huge set of brushes, including all the normal pixel brushes and some really fun brushes to make shapes quickly, to hatch, to 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 uh, uh, simulate hair, stuff like that. Cool. Um, and so how did so, go ahead? Sorry. No, uh, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so uh, how did this get started, and then how did you get involved? Well, it got started uh, a long time ago. Uh, way back at the Linux Congress, which was a conference in Germany, there was this guy and, and KDE was, had just started. Uh, Qt was just out and he had a hack for GIMP that would make GIMP use Qt, Qt file dialogues, and it would look good in a KDE desktop. This was before KDE 1. And then uh, people blew a gasket. Uh, how dare you touch our application and make it work with this uh, non-GPL uh, toolkit. Um, uh, Matthias Etter, he was the guy back then, I wasn't even involved. He was like, okay, we can do this. We can do this too. We're making our own image manipulation application. How hard can it be? Six months later, uh, basically nothing was working. Uh, and then um, uh, Another six months later, someone else had picked up the project and did some stuff. And then someone else, another six months later, was like, how hard can this be? It can't be hard, can it? Six months and we should have something usable. And that's Ross ended around 2003 when you couldn't even paint. You could load an image and that was it. And at that time, uh, I got a graphics tablet. I was actually writing a novel. And I needed to draw a map for my novel. So I wanted to have a Linux application to draw maps. And I didn't understand GIMP. Well, my fault, not GIMP's fault, but I didn't understand GIMP at all. So what do you do? You start coding. And after starting my own application, which of course failed in two weeks because it's much harder than it looks like, uh, I started looking for applications that were small enough that I could understand them and promising enough that uh, I could believe that it would, would would get somewhere. So I started coding. And it was a huge coincidence, but at the same time, a couple of other people also started coding on Krita. And we, we, we just went on from there. A year later, we had a release. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Um, so um, uh, we actually, uh, if you're watching the video stream, or uh, we actually have some uh, images that we can show from the uh, gallery there. So this is these are some amazingly beautiful pictures uh, I mean, I, I certainly couldn't tell that those weren't from some other, you know, professional paint program. Is, is, is this really only appeal to artists, though, or could I also use it for, like, mechanical drawings and things? Well, you'd probably need a lot of tools we don't have. Uh, okay. It's, I mean, for mechanical drawings, you need to have measurements and stuff like that. Right. right. That won't work. Um, if, if you want to make a website layout, which is something that people do use Photoshop for, that's 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 not something that we really support. Uh, what we do support is 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 movie and VFX. So uh, we have some some features for high definition painting, which is thirty two bit floating pointed channel, which is used by 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 by, by movie studios. And um, um, for instance, this this image, uh, that that sort of a matte painting, which is a kind of a backdrop you would, would use in in a movie, and you'd make this starting with existing images, uh, piece them together, do some transformations, uh, and then you get, get this huge landscape that you project in the, in, in the background of your movie. And that's something that Krita is being used for. Uh, so it's, it's mainly illustrates comic book artists. But I've heard from someone that he's been uh, using Krita on uh, a Disney movie about a big white guy. I've forgotten the title. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's being used for, 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 for big productions as well. And so we might uh, use this as sort of source art for game design or, or maybe in terms of, uh, or, and as you just said, movie production, which sounds really amazing. Um, what, uh, what's it written in? C++. It's, okay. it's all C++. And, and were you already like, uh, what, what attracted you to joining this project? Do you have both a heavy art background and a, C a strong programming background, or are you stronger in one than the other, or, oh, or, or what? Actually, I'm just a linguist, originally. 
<laughs> so the- uh, of course, I've been coding all my life since I was 12, and I've been doing art since I was, was, was a baby, I guess. I've been, been scribbling all, always, but uh, it was like this. Uh, I needed something to draw that map, and I knew... No, I didn't know any C++. I knew Python, and I knew Java, but I thought, how hard can it be? And the guy who was the maintainer of, 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 of Krita back then, he didn't have time to actually develop the application, but he did have time to mentor me into learning C++. I was totally amazed. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I, I noticed that uh, you, you mentioned that you know, you're able to get things up and running very qu- fairly quickly, and I'm just installing it um, now, actually, and I'm just, I, I see that it's using a lot of Qt libraries. Um, what, did that help make the development process go a lot, a lot quicker? Oh, yes. Uh, I don't think I would have been able to, we wouldn't have been able to get as far as we got without Qt. And what, what was it there that, um, I mean, what led you in that? Was it obvious from the beginning or did the project just start there because it was easier? I mean, what, what led you down that path? Well, I, I, I knew Qt because I had written one of the books on, on, on using Python and Qt, so... Cute was, was, was an advantage, and I just got started because back then I didn't know what I was doing. So I was first trying to write this brush engine, and then I was blogging about it and saying, I, I'm not getting a nice brush, what's up? And then someone else would join the project and help us with brushes, and, and so on the, uh, the project just grew and grew and grew. Uh, until around 2007, we sort of got stuck. We were still trying to do a generic image editor, uh, a KDE is GIMP, a GIMP with a K, GIMP. Mm-hmm. And, and that sort of got boring. And besides, we had to do a lot of stuff that, 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 that we weren't all that interested in. So we sat down actually with Peter Sicking, who is one of the, the who was part of the GIMP team back then. Uh, Peter Sicking is a, a, a user interaction designer and a really good one. And he sat down with us and he was like, OK, guys, I'm going to ask you some tough questions. What do you want to do with this application? What do you want to do with this project? Are you just having fun writing code? Or do you want to get somewhere? Or do you want to have users? Do you want to have a vision? So we sat down and we got this vision of, of Krita as an application to create images from scratch. And, and, and that's, that's when, when everything started to, to snowball. And we had a vision, we started, well, we, we were uh, really getting down to, 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 okay, this is not useful. We are not going to do a panorama stitching plugin anymore, but we are going to do yet another brush engine. I'm wondering, um, the, the, the chat room is chiming in here saying that the, you mentioned there were some movies uh, that have, have perhaps used this to do some of their background work. Uh, the mat, the mats that go behind the, the you know what's happening in front on the scene. And somebody mentioned that Big Hero Six possibly. I mean, can we? Yeah. Did, did somebody uh, that that worked on Big Hero Six? Did they use this? Yes, I, I heard from one of the artists who were working on on that movie that he used it. It's been used on GI Joe, and I, I'm sure there are more uh, movies. That's been used on the, the problem is this is mostly artists who decide. Okay, I. I, I need this tool, uh, and, and I need a tool that, that, that makes my life really easy, and Krita is that tool. And then, of course, they just, just, just go to their, their uh, IT department and ask, can I have it? Yeah, yeah. Well, they, I mean, hopefully, I mean, they shouldn't really even have to ask, right? I mean, it's just, it's not like they have to, to, to pay anything for it, I assume, unless, no. unless they're looking for support or something, right? So, um, uh, I'm, I'm always happy to give support. <laughs> but I mean, it just seems like what, what is it about this tool that would make an artist want to use it over uh, something else? You know, it, that 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 already exists. I mean, why would they go? But besides the open source argument and and all that, you know, we're we're all for that, obviously. Um, but I mean, besides that, what is it about the tool that makes it so attractive for artists that they can't get maybe in the commercial space? So, uh, in the first place, compared to Photoshop, it runs on Linux. All these studios run Linux. So that for, for movie studios, that's an important point. For the artist and his workflow, the thing is, we really, really 
uh, focus on, on, on the painting workflow. Photoshop still is mostly an image editor. Uh, you load an image and work with it. Uh, we have a host of tools. For instance, there's the wraparound mode, which uh, wraps your, your, the image you're working on uh, all over the screen, which makes it really easy to create seamless textures. It's, it's totally interactive. If, if, if you're working on concept art, uh, you can activate the mirror mode and then you only paint one half of your image and the other half gets painted for you. And that's a huge time saver if you're doing concept art, which is mostly the, the, these puppets that uh, are, are standing with arms wide and completely symmetrical. Well, that's, that's what you can use Krita for. Uh, we have these brush engines that make it easy to do some hatching or shading uh, or just, just, just when you are in the conceptual a face of your, your, your image, uh, a brush engine where you just lay down shapes and then you can get inspired by those shapes. It's, it's really all about workflow. Uh, I remember one night when, uh, evening, when David Revoir was working on the storyboard for the Blender movie, Sintel, and he was like, I have to do 140 images this weekend. By the way, can you give me this feature? That will help my workflow, sure. And I called it a feature, and half an hour later it was done. And he was recompiling, an hour later he had recompiled, and he was like, okay, I'm working, and now I need this feature. So what we are really trying to do is get, get in touch with our users, learn about the workflow, and, and make their workflow as smooth as possible. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, you mentioned Sintel just now. Um, I was just going to ask about Blender. Um, what is there... What's the integration? Is there integration between um, the, the two applications? It seems like they would kind of go, go closely together. I mean, for example, you mentioned being able to have a brush that, that paints a hair texture or, um, you know, I guess you can make one for anything, a, a stubble texture. I didn't shave this morning. I mean, so, so it seems like the integration there would be pretty tight, yes or, or no? Are they still too... Uh, completely separate I, I think applications. We, we still want tighter integration. Krita uh, uh, doesn't have scripting. That's one of our big goals for this year. Uh, and that will make a lot of, lots of things possible. But for instance, if you're using Blender to, to render an image uh, that you want to overpaint, then Krita can load that image into something we call a file layer, which is dynamic. Every time Blender re-renders, Krita will reload your, your, your render into your Krita image stack. And the other way around, if you paint something in Krita and use this, that as a texture in Blender, then the, 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 the Blender will update when you update your texture. Uh, uh, Blender uses color management using a library called OpenColor.io, which comes from the movie studio. And Krita supports exactly that same method of color management. Uh, basically, you've got two ways of doing color management for print or for screens. And for print is the Photoshop way with open ICC profiles. And for movies, you use OpenColor.io. And we support both. Great. Uh, you know, just a moment ago, you mentioned the uh, unique wrap mode. Um, I mean, it might not be unique, but boy, I haven't seen anything else that does this. So we actually have a video demo, and you, we can talk while the demo's going on. You can describe what's actually going on here. So it looks like we're looking at, uh, it, uh, this is tiled, though. It's kind of neat. So yeah, uh, on the screen, what you're seeing is is we're drawing uh, in one place, but it automatically replicates that. So think of the, the middle. There's like a six, uh, probably 256 by 256 square. And it's just being automatically mirrored on the screen. And, and can you draw anywhere on the screen and just maps it back yep. to that original square? Yes. And then, you can't color pick everywhere, but you can just draw because just just follow the cursor. The, uh, the, 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 the original image is just that tiny square in the middle. And as you can see, we can zoom as well. And you can just paint anywhere and you can rotate your canvas. And um, uh, because that makes it easier to draw straight lines. There's the original so square there. So that's the original yeah. image, and then you press W, and it starts wrapping. Wow. So the big problem with getting seamless uh, infinite tiles is that, you know, you have to match up the left side and the right side, and there's all sorts of like, yep. tricks to do that. But this thing, is is there anybody else that has something like this? Not that I know. Wow, wow, because uh, this, this video is actually 15 minutes long. We're just going to show a tiny bit more of it, but I wanted to uh, bring that in. So uh, what uh, I, th I think you already rattled off the list of what's unique to uh, Krita, but um, um, so, ag again, uh, would I use this as a s part of a suite of applications, and when would I pick this 
if I have like this and GIMP and Photoshop and, and Blender and stuff, how do I know to go to this? Is this when I'm just creating something original that I, that I want to paint with? It's, uh, especially this feature, Wraparound, is used a lot by people who also use Blender. Uh, it's a, a creator used to be, 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 be relatively unknown until last year when we, we made a big splash. We went to SIGGRAPH and we are just hoping to get, get this recognition uh, going. Uh, we went from, from about 2,000 downloads a month to 50,000 now. So I think people are getting to know that, that Krita exists. And then it's just a matter of giving it a try. <laughs> because cool. it's free. Um, and so uh, how, how does the development process work? How does... I mean, you're getting, you're getting your cues from artists who say, I want to paint a certain way. Uh, how do they describe it to you in a way that you can implement it? Uh, we are really lucky. We have a great set of artists who join us on ISC, who report back, who join us for sprints. If, if you go to a Creator Developer Sprint, then about half of the people present will be artists. And we'll just sit down. We had this, this session uh, about uh, two or three years ago, which was really good for us because we had this sprint in Amsterdam, actually in the Blender uh, Institute offices. And uh, we sat down and we told the artist, now you're going to paint for an hour and we are going to tape you and we are going to watch you and you're allowed to complain and we are not allowed to say, oh yes, but, but that's already implemented. You cannot use this or that. We were just going to listen to them. And that was so illuminating. So now we just, just sit down with them. We, we listen to them. If, if an artist comes to me and tells me, oh, Photoshop has got this great feature. Can you give me this Photoshop feature? then I sit down and, and ask him, but what are you using it for? Uh, can you show me what you're trying to do? What's the effect you're trying to achieve? And then we will often arrive at, at a feature request. Uh, let, let's have something special. And we will start implementing it. Wow, cool. You know, it, it sounds like with the amount of effort you put into this, this is, this is professional level user interface testing, which I don't, a lot of open source software packages don't get to do. And we never saw it like 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 that. We just uh, wanted to 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 get our users to use our application, and 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 we wanted to make it as good as possible for them. Very good. We also have another video coming up here. Uh, it's on the cage transformation, which I think is coming up new in the next release. Um, you want to go ahead and describe what we're seeing in a second there. There we go. Um, so what's on the screen? I'll, I'll start by saying there's a, uh, there's a monster or something, and uh, the artist has gone and drawn a box around the outside of the, of the uh, monster, and uh, I think in a second or so he's going to actually start doing some transformation here. And tell me what this cage transformation is actually doing. Uh, at a technical level, to be honest, I don't know. This was written by Dimitri. Uh, he's he's, he's the, 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 one of the full-time developers we, we got uh, working on Krita. Uh, uh, the, the Krita Foundation uh, collects money. And, 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 well, Dimitri is really good at mathematics. So this is mathematical magic. As like I said, I'm a linguist. I don't do mathematics. <laughs> well, I can describe what I... Yeah. <laughs> I can describe what I think it's doing because as, we, as we're seeing a change here, it's like scale and rotate, except they can do bar parts of it at a time. So you can imagine the perspective transform in, uh, in Photoshop or whatever. But, uh, but there's instead of just four points you're dragging around, you're dragging around 40 points that you've placed around the outside of this thing. So now this, this monster we were looking at was originally horizontal. It's now sort of vertical. And it, but it's all transformed proportionately as it went around. And it's just really amazing stuff. I don't, I don't know if anybody else can do this either. This is, this is pretty cool stuff. I, I, I think uh, at least, um, I don't know whether it's, it's landed already, but GIMP had a Summer of Code project that did cage transformation, but their algorithm was a bit on the slow side. And uh, I, I just don't know whether they already uh, merged that work to, to Git Master. It's, it's not in their release yet. And we're not going to watch the whole 15 minutes of this video, but at the end, it's just that he, his head becomes giant. And, but it's, it, it stays well together. So there's, there's stretching and pulling and, and tugging on things and stuff. And it, it ultimately comes out with this, this uh, uh, giant head. And, but it, and it all still looks right, which is the amazing thing. It's like it's, it just worked. And he, he actually goes in the second part of the video and he actually draws the cage again and actually stretches it different ways now that it sort of started from here. So that is really, really amazing stuff. Um, 
So um, uh, uh, how uh, who, how many people? You, so you obviously didn't program this, and you said you had some sort of cooperation for, with another project on that. I think didn't you say that? Well, uh, we didn't really cooperate with with Gimp on cage transformation. What I meant was oh. they they had this this feature, or at least okay. someone who implemented it, uh, and and so did we. We spent a lot of time last year on on our transformation tools. We got a huge number of new transformation features because. It's something that artists use a lot. Uh, when I was drawing with a pen and paper or pencil and paper, I was mm -hmm. always trying to get it right in, in, in immediately. But these professional artists, they draw something and they are not satisfied with the proportions and just transform it a bit. Yeah, it's very cool, very cool. And uh, so how many people are actually d contributing to uh, the development right now? It's uh, two full-time developers, that's me and Dimitri. Mm -hmm. And then there's about uh, a dozen, maybe 20 uh, part-time people who do this for fun. Are you getting patches from uh, the community? Oh, yes, lots. And, and the number is increasing. And we are really uh, easy with patches. If you've done three patches and those three patches are good, you will get your commit access and you can basically do whatever you want. Wow. Uh, and th th this, this is one of those projects that it's kind of hard because the kind of people who would contribute are probably not the people who are downloading it and using it because that requires both an art brain and a, and a science brain, which I only have the science part of this. So how, how, where are these patches coming from? What kinds of people are out there contributing source? Well, it's, it's exactly that, that, that division. There are artists who think, okay, I really need this new color selector. And then they teach themselves C++ and code out a color selector. No, no, that's not possible. No. <laughs> But it's awesome. So, great. And then there are people who are really attracted by, by, by the mathematics side of it. And there are people like me who are attracted by the user interface side, the workflow side of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your community, uh, do you have a lot of cross support and, and uh, cross, like, even I, I, I see these tutorial videos. I, I presume some of them were contributed. Um, do, you, do you get a lot of that? Oh, yes. It's, it's awesome. It's one of the things I love most about working on this project. It's the interaction with, with the community. It's, it's seeing those videos. It's, it's being amazed. There was this French guy. He had just discovered Krita. And he wrote an article, 20 fe 25 features of Krita that are amazing. Amazing article because two of those features, I'd forgotten they existed. That's great. That's good. It's like little corners of pearl that I've forgotten over the years. And somebody shows me something in it, and I go, that's, that's cool. Or somebody will talk about a technique of how to do something. And then they say, when, when I'm amazed how cool that was, they say, oh, yeah, I got it from one of your articles back <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten more than I've learned, I guess. That's amazing. Um, so what, what, what's next for Krita? What are you, where are you trying to go with this? For this year, we've got uh, four things we really want to do. Uh, the first is a huge optimization. Uh, all free software graphics applications have a problem with really big images. And images are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, when we started with Krita, people were like, well, 1024 by 768 pixels, that's a big image. And yeah. 25 pixel size brush, that's a big brush. And now they are like... Why are brushes limited to 1,000 pixel diameter? And when I do a 10,000 by 8,000 pixel image, it gets kind of slow. So, um, and besides, and that's what you will always hear is, oh, Photoshop is much faster with those big images. Why isn't Krita as fast? So we spent some time last year investigating that problem and we cracked the code, we think. We, now we just need to implement it. So that's our number one priority after uh, we released the next version of Krita. Uh, together with that, uh, we got a lot of interest from 2D animators. 2D animation is, is, is really hot at the moment. People like the hand-drawn style of animation a lot more than the vector style of animation that Flash does. And there isn't any good free software that supports that. Mm. So we got someone on board who is an animator and who likes to code, and that's something that we want to dig into. The next step is Python scripting. I love Python. I haven't done any Python since I started working on Krita, and now I want to add scripting using Python. And finally, uh, we have a port for OS X, but it's highly experimental, and we want to 
get that ready for end users. Hey, uh, so, so uh, sorry, go ahead. Those are four main things. Yep. Okay. Four main things. Great. Uh, I would also suggest, uh, I, I don't know Python. So every time somebody brings up Python, it's like, uh, I don't have to go learn something new and say, although I think Python's used for Blender, right? Python is used for Blender and every big application in the movie VFX world uses Python. The, the uh, Maya is scriptable in Python. Mari, which is a 3D paint application, is written in Python. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I'll, I'll grant you that Python one. I was actually just occurred to me that you might do something like JavaScript because a lot of more people are learning JavaScript for a lot of different things. But, uh, yeah, you know, the, this isn't really a web app or web related. So I guess it probably wouldn't make much sense there for that. Photoshop is uh, scriptable in JavaScript. Sorry, what? Photoshop is scriptable in JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be comparable for that in terms of coming from that world or whatever, or, or, or both maybe. Maybe you do the APIs and then you, uh, you know, you just, you just call it from the various languages. It might be kind of cool anyway. Um, so, to do that, to do the, those four goals, uh, do you have the resources in, in mind already, or is there something you can shout out to our audience, specifically the kinds of people that you need to make that happen? Uh, <laughs> developers, developers, developers. <laughs> 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 but uh, we we also need 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 financial resources to do this because uh, there there are some things that are just so hard that you can't do that in your spare time. That 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 performance optimization is something where we will lock Dimitri in his flat in Moscow for three months and only allow him to get out when he's done. <laughs> nice. Of course, he and, needs to have some food. And what's the finance model for this? I, I, I know I can download it for free, but I think he suggests that we buy it through various sources. Uh, we sell Krita on Steam, and that's actually quite successful. Uh, we have a development fund, just, just like the Blender Foundation, where people can subscribe and then, um, uh, uh, just like with Patreon, uh, donate a small amount of money every month. And that's working as well. Uh, we sell training DVDs and we are going to do another fundraiser, another Kickstarter, uh, uh, probably around March, April. Cool, cool. You know, I was just thinking, I now I was, trying, I was chatting with you before we started about, I didn't remember where I learned about Krita from. Oh, no, that wasn't it. Okay, I was talking maybe that it was also one of the people that Linux Fund donated to, but I'll have to, we've got some money, so maybe we'll just throw some money in your way. I'm sure you wouldn't mind that. Um, no. Nope. I said... I sit on the board of Linux Fund too, so I'll suggest that to my uh, my the board. Maybe uh, bring that up there. Um, so, what um, what has been the um, I was going to say what has been the biggest challenge? But no, no, that's a good thing. So, so as you were going through this ten year development cycle, what what were the hard nuts to crack trying to get it to work better? The the really hardest thing was was just our own stupid fault. And when we ported Krita from Q3 to Q4, we thought, oh, Q4 is so awesome. It has so many new features. We are going to do a huge refactoring. And a huge refactoring meant we didn't have a release for, for about four years because we just couldn't get it stable. And that's just something that we will never do again. Technically, uh, that, that performance optimization that makes huge images work is something that we've been, been, been thinking about and investigating for over three years. And for me personally, and that might sound a bit silly, uh, because you realize uh, GIMP had this multi-window GUI, right? And they implemented a single window GUI. We had a single window GUI. And our users wanted to have a multi-window GUI. And it took me two years to refactor Krita to make that possible. It was just so tough because the underlying document model, the, 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 the code, it, it completely wasn't prepared for that. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, number one, and I, we sort of talked about this, saying that it required uh, QT. Um, but I know that this supports, this is supported on Windows and Linux and then not really on Mac yet. Um, I just wanted to kind of get into how easy it is to install. I know you said you can buy it on Steam and everything. Um, I mean, I didn't have any problems with it except that I didn't have the Qt libraries installed yet. So I had to download all, a big bundle of Qt libraries. Generally, you only have to do that once. Um, and then all the, all the other applications that depend on it, they, they gets installed. Uh, or they, they can use that um, as well. So, um, so that was the only downside I saw. But it seems like you've got packages for all the major Linux distributions and Windows. And then if you could just comment on that and then come back to the Mac support. Uh, for, for Windows, that, 
took quite a bit of time because all those dependencies, it's Qt, it's a bunch of KDE libraries, uh, it's a bunch of, of libraries like, like libjpg, all kind of stuff that's not available on Windows by default. So we had to build and package that ourselves. Uh, as for the KDE libraries, I stripped that down, all the, the extra stuff I cut out so the, the total installer isn't all that big. Uh, and that took quite a bit of effort. We did that around 2013. Um, and then the other thing I saw um, is the templates. Uh, I saw you had templates available. Um, so when I first opened the application, it said, do you want a comic template? Do you want a film template? Can you explain what those templates are? It's basically uh, empty Krita documents, images that you can load and then start, uh, start, start drawing on. So for instance, the comic book templates have uh, comic book frames ready for use. Uh, it's, it's set up with a bunch of, of, of uh, factor, factor layers that provide the frames, and then you just draw uh, between the frames and uh, in, inside the frames, and the area between the frames will remain white. Uh, it, it's, it's a convenience for, for starting with a certain type of image. You can save your own favorite uh, image settings as a template as well. And then what about, I don't think we've touched on this. Sorry, I've been playing with this as you guys have been talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure I followed everything. But, you know, what about like, uh, what are they called? Wacom or Wacom tablets, things like that. I mean, is that how people typically interface with the software? They, do yes. they, would they, I'm assuming it does, right? Because this is meant for people that would use those. Last year, we completely rewrote the support for tablets. So we could support not just Wacom, but also Hoyong and Yinova and others. Uh, tablet manufacturers have been really nice to us. Uh, Wacom has sent us tablets to test with. Yinova has sent us tablets to test with. Hoyon has sent us tablets to test with. And so we wrote tablet support almost from scratch to support all these, 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 these uh, uh, pen-enabled tablets. Uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 3 uh, took a bit of effort to support and that's that's how, what people usually use because it's no fun to draw with just a mouse. Yeah, I'm d I'm doing that now actually, and um, I'm, I, it is. I'm not doing a very good job um, at all. You can see. I don't know if you can tell uh, who this is here. I'm trying to draw, but um, <laughs> uh, uh, self portrait. No. no, no, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah. It does look more like me though, doesn't it? Yeah, we're, we're, we're somewhat similar, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it actually, it's it's very satisfying, I think, as a as a non-artistic uh, person. It's the, the the brushes that you have here, yeah. and and, oh. and everything. I mean, whoa, that one's way too big. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on me that's that big. Come yeah, but on. you can you can get a sense for the textures, right? I mean, this looks like yeah. kind of like a chalk or a or a charcoal right. uh, type of thing. Um, let me let me get another one. There's a really cool one here that I did your hair with, Randall. Uh, yeah. I think it's this one. Oh, yes. Um, let me make this a little bigger. I don't know. Can I make it bigger? Maybe not. Um, but as you as you draw with it, it, it does these nice, like you can see as I'm going back and forth, I'm holding oh. down the mouse and, and drawing back and forth. And it, and it does this just really cool, like, it, I mean, it's almost like a little bit of a watercolor or something that's bleeding off the tip of whatever I'm drawing with. And... Um, I don't know. It just it just it ends up looking really really cool. So I've never seen these types of brushes uh, before in a in a in an open source application. Um, so I mean, for artists, I can see now why you'd say you know the artists really love this because you can. I mean, I haven't even touched the surface. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I don't know what that one does. Let me go to a different cloner. Must looks like a cloner. Duplicates. Yeah. You know, they, these all do these all do different things. They're all there's uh, a bunch of um, uh, this one does. Um, well, you can't see it because it's painting white. But this is like a <laughs> oh, there we go. See, it's it's painting painting red. It's like a uh, uh, what's the thing you use to the uh, paint sprayer thing? <laughs> airbrush. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't think of it. I couldn't think of it. So there's all kinds of like airbrush tools and uh, I mean, it's just really, really cool. And so I'll see, uh, you know, as we're wrapping up, I'll see if I can finish my, my portrait of, of Randall and then uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll show how far I got when we're done. But this is just really cool stuff. And it really is, it seems to me that this is really, uh, you're, you're filling a, a, a niche here that wasn't filled by GIMP or Inkscape in, in that you want to, um, 
have something for artists that's that's more you know uh, dr more like drawing with with the uh, tools that artists are used to, to drawing with and it's very difficult to do that on uh, GIMP or Photoshop and, and certainly Inkscape it's it's just not built for that. No, and yeah, that that's what we built Creator for. We built Creator for artists who want to to create, and and that's why we call all those sun brushes. I, uh, I noticed in the uh, documentation, uh, one of the pages I hit while I was studying for this this morning, that uh, it says if you don't have a pressure sensitive uh, pad, you're missing out on many of the features of uh, of, of Krita. Do you want to explain what that means and, and why you would need a pressure sensitive pad? Uh, that that's those those Wacom tablets. Or, or other manufacturers, they pretty much all work these days. Those, those, those tablets, they, you've got a pen, and uh, if you press firmer than uh, Twitter will register the, the firmness of your touch. And you can use that in, 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 in a hundred different ways to define your brushes. The, the standard way is if you press firmer, your, your brush will be darker, it will be more opaque, it will be bigger, but you can do anything with it because our brush engines are really flexible. So if you don't have that, if, if you have uh, uh, just your mouse, you don't get that sort of input, which means that, that your lines will not be as, as, as much fun and, and not as interesting. Uh, what kind of transition does a... What, what, are, what have you heard uh, when someone transitions from traditional media to a, a paint program like this, what what are the challenges they face? What you know? What's their biggest stumbling blocks? And what have, have, have you been able to accommodate some of that in Krita? Uh, that's that's actually really difficult for a lot of people, and it's it's not something that Krita itself can do a lot about because uh, the big thing is most of these graphics tablets don't have uh, uh, a monitor screen. Some have, but they are really expensive. So if you are a beginner in digital painting, you get a Wacom Bamboo Fun or, or a Huion tablet, you have to look at the screen while drawing on your tablet, and the two are disconnected. And that's mm. really tough for people to get used to. Yeah, I know. It's, it's sort of like now that I've used my iPhone for so many times, and I, I look up on my screen on my, on my laptop, and I want to just touch it and go, you know, just like I'm doing on the, on the iPhone. So uh, I, I recognize that is, that would be pretty difficult. But once they get past that hurdle, um, do, they, do, do people change their style or can they emulate their traditional media style directly using Krita and, and other tools like that? Uh, they, they mostly change their style because one, once they discover all the possibilities of digital painting, uh, they tend to go just wild. Okay, so it's sort of like when someone goes from uh, just a, a typewriter. Oh, who, who, who of us have used a typewriter? Okay, now I'm really dating myself. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I, go. You have good. Well, yeah, you, you're probably similar ages. That's why. Um, so the, um, uh, but it's sort of like when uh, when oh, I'll, I'll describe it this way: when the laser printers first came out, I remember people's resumes went from just sort of simple TypeScript to uh, 17 fonts because <laughs> they could. <laughs> You know, just re really annoying that way. So um, we're sort of, uh, I actually have a couple questions I want to ask you. Um, what was the Kickstarter about? Uh, we had this this idea, okay, for, for, for the next version of Krita, we really want to, to uh, get a wider audience. And we want to know what this wider audience really wants. So we set up a short list of features we thought were doable. And then we set up the Kickstarter and we told our Kickstarter backers, okay, now you can vote for your top 12 features. And those top features were what we were going to implement. And that was a huge, huge success. People loved that. And you have one coming up soon? Yes. That will be probably a bit more limited because we need the money for those big four features I just talked about. Okay, and uh, do you have a, a, a list of things that aren't going to be funded by that, but would also be really great to do? I mean, are you keeping like a like a long to do list? No, not really. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's 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 we have a lot of, of things we really need to do, like those big things, and then uh, uh, artists will visit, come come uh, come by and visit us and tell us, oh God, uh, I'm I'm having this problem right now. And can you help me? And we are like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Like we had this Russian guy and he was working on uh, a game, 
a, a Facebook game. And he needed something to get those isometric tiles uh, to, to work on those in the easiest possible way. So we were like, okay, you are asking us for that feature, but if we give you this, uh, you will be able to work really quickly. So we just implemented that. It's, it's, it's mostly us developers and, and artists sitting together on IRC and, and, and getting down to some, making something cool. Cool, cool. Um, and uh, what's, uh, it has this feature called realistic color mixing. What's that about? Oh, that's all, pretty much that. Uh, you know, when you're mixing colors on a computer, then the, 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 the color combinations are not like you learned in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you mix uh, yellow and, 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 and blue, you will get a really weird color. So what we sat down to do uh, one summer of code was figure out the equations of actually mixing light the, the, the spectrally. That was a lot of fun. And you really would get orange when mixing uh, yellow and red. And that was, was, was great. The thing is, artists didn't really use it because they are used to the way digital colors work and that's what they want. Uh, they, they weren't interested in, in, in realistic color mixing using the Kubelka monk equations. And that meant that the feature sort of, of bit rotted and we had to take it out. It's pretty because it was unique. Wow. Wow. Well, is it, well, why would you need to take it out? Can't you just have it as an option that you could flick in one of the preferences? It, it happened during the port to Qt4 when, when we just never got, got around to porting the code. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. It would have been interesting, I think. Um, um, uh, and... Uh, uh, who's Peter Sicking, and how is he related to your project? Uh, Peter Sicking uh, used to work with the GIMP team. He's, he's left now as an interaction designer. And as an interaction designer, he has a lot of input on, on, on the way the next version of GIMP will work. And we were like, okay, here's this guy, and he's really good. And, and we can use some help. So we invited him to one of our developer sprints, and he helped us set up the vision. Cool, and cool. Yeah, go ahead. And, and, and then we met uh, a couple of times more, and he helped us set up things like our brush editor and, and the workflow for that. Cool. Hey, uh, Aaron, how are you coming on that picture? Uh, pretty good. I'm working on your shirt now. Uh, I'm kind of watching. Uh... Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this is, my, this is my little, uh, my, my attempt at, you know, <laughs> doing your shirt and... Not all bad. that. I mean, it's you know, it's a uh, it, it's a pretty easy tool to to really start working with if you uh, can actually draw. I'm if not if a I could draw, you know, I'm not a I'm yeah. not an artiste, uh, but you know, that's that's as far as I got, and the, which it's not too bad. You know, it kind of looks like I I did it by hand, right? <laughs> it looks very much like you did it by hand. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to submit this uh, for for one of the drawings that goes on the website. Well, we should on the probably also website. I think this should be featured. No, 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 this should not be the new icon for oh, the show, though. No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> although, although, although it does appear that uh, Floss Weekly is the only show that doesn't have the uh, host's face on it, but that's okay, it's because we talk about important things, not just me. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Bjorn, uh, we're almost out of time. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you want to make sure our audience is aware, aware of? I can't think of anything. Wow, um, cool. Let, let, let them download Creator and have fun. <laughs> and, of course, there's uh, stuff on the website about how to reach you and how to join the community and uh, also how to... Uh, uh, and great tutorials, like the two things I showed, I, I found immediately on the tutorial page there. So that was a lot of fun. There's like 30 different videos we could have actually seen during the show, but, uh, you know, we don't want to cut away the video too often there. Um, uh, well, i, I got to ask my final two questions. I think I know the answer to one of them. What's your uh, favorite scripting language? <laughs> My favorite scripting language is Python. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forget that. I, I forget did that. use Perl actually. To, hey. uh, yeah, I wrote an application in it that would take a set of words and then apply sound changes and create the same set of words a thousand years later. Wow, cool, cool. Well, that's at least you've used Perl, unlike some of our guests, but that's okay. Um, and uh, what is your favorite text editor? Vi, Emacs, Emacs, Vi. I use them all. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you don't have a preference? Oh, wow. 
Doesn't have a preference, though. No. Okay, well, great. Well, we'll put a half a score in and half a score out for that one for me. All right, that'll work. That'll work. Well, you know what? This has been remarkable. I, I, I appreciate what you're doing here with Krita, and I think it's opening up a whole new way of, a whole new world of people interacting with uh, uh, artists coming and using Linux as a real uh, application platform. Um, you know, we've, especially since I think Photoshop still isn't on the, uh, the Linux, right? Yeah, so this is really people's only choice. So thank you for coming on the show and describing Greta for us. Thank you for having me. Hey, Randall, one, one more quick question before we go. I just oh, want to throw sorry. this in. It came in on the chat room, and it was on my list, and I forgot to ask it, which is, uh, is there any way that this could be ported over to uh, tablets, especially like Android tablets or, or phones? Is that in the works? So that uh, I know that like on my um, NVIDIA Shield, it comes with a stylus, and it's actually very it's touch sensitive and, and, and pretty accurate. Um, is there any plans to port this over to mobile? We'll have to first port to Qt5, and then Android is something I really want to do because Wacom gave me a Synthic Hybrid Companion, which is their Android-based uh, graphics tablet, and I want to use Krita on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just I, I have used some of the built-in, I forget what the application is that comes with the Shield tablet um, to do drawings, and it does a lot of this already. My daughter loves it because she can actually use a real instrument and, and do things, um, and this would be even better, I think. If, if this got ported. So uh, we'll be keeping a, a, an eye out for that. Race Q asked that in the uh, in the chat room. So I wanted to get that question in because I know a lot of people are going to be thinking about that. Sorry to interrupt. No worries. No worries. That's a great, great question, though. Thank you. And uh, they, oh, <laughs> 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 that's great. Thanks, John. That's great. <laughs> it almost fits. It's almost there. <laughs> uh, hey, not bad well, for like, you know, 10 minutes yeah. of work from a non-artist, though, right? You didn't even read the instructions. You didn't read no, the I didn't. I just started clicking. Start typing on things. So, yeah. so it does actually show that it's really... Um, uh, actually, yes, let me say goodbye to but better one again. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you. Okay, great. So um, that was uh, Bedouin Rimt, whose name I mispronounced about seven times now. And uh, it's, it's, pull that picture back up of that face over me here. Let's look at that. That's, that is not bad. <laughs> but you, this is one show that, you you know, if you're listening to this in your car uh, or, or while you're running or something like that, you've got to go look at the video of this show because it's just, it's, just, it's just too cute. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other final words here before, we, before I start doing the rest of the rundown here? No, no. I just I think that that's really, really good. Uh, I think... I'm really impressed. I now have a go-to app, open source app that I can point people to that want to do this type of artistic work. Uh, before, I think it was a little bit of a hole, and maybe it's just my not knowing, uh, uh, you know, not having a personal interest in this, I guess. Um, the stuff that I do, I think I'm still going to stick with GIMP because that's really what that's designed for. But now when people come to me and say, well, I really like to draw things. I'm not really into the Photoshop thing, but, you know, I love to, to, to do drawings and things, and I, I'd like to do that uh, with open source software. I can go back and say, hey, have you heard of Krita? It's awesome. Or Krita. Krita, Krita. Krita. You say Krita, yes. <laughs> I'm going to get it wrong from now on because I'm going to keep second-guessing myself. And, you know, I, I've seen the sort of manipulations that you can do with Photoshop based on pressure sensitivity and things like that. But this sounds like it's got even more knobs. He said a hundred different things. So it's like, wait a second. <laughs> I, I know Photoshop has about 18 or 20 sliders, but not a hundred sliders. So I'm going to have to look at the interface of that. And, and it, it, obviously it was intuitive to you. It's, you. You were able to just pick it right up and, and uh, must be using familiar icons then for most of the tools. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the airbrush and the, the chisel tools. I mean, you can you can see them down here. Obviously, the eraser tool. I mean, it, it's pretty obvious from, and this is not obvious in GIMP, by the way. But it's pretty obvious, and but what it is, you know, this says block bristles when you hover over it. So that gives you an indication not only from the way the icon looks, but also from um, you know in a textual way what what it does. You know, here's block fuzzy. Uh, there was one down here that says block bristles hairy. You know, so it gives you a, <laughs> it gives you an idea already what it's going to look like, and then it's very easy just to pick one of these and start drawing with it. Um, and then you can kind of see like, oh yeah, I, I can kind of see what that does. You know, I can kind of see how it works. You know, and you just do control Z and get rid of all that stuff. And then you go back and pick a pick, you know, if that's not what you want, pick another one. So you can, you can get a feel for what the, what the brushes do 
very, very easily just, you know, just by trying them out. There's no right or wrong. It's, I guess in that, in that way, it's a lot better than drawing on a real canvas with real tools because, you know, then you've got to go back over them again and get rid of them if you make a mistake or, you know, try to, try to smudge them out or something because uh, you committed to uh, the, what you've done to the canvas. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really, I think it's really intuitive, I'm a lot more intuitive than I thought it was going to be when I got started because there was a lot of questions that came up like, you know, what kind of resolution do you want, all the normal questions. And then what type of layout do you want? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I'll just hit go. And so I hit go and it, it just works. Cool. And, uh, uh it just seems it, it's, you know, it's, it's like if you're coming from the Photoshop world and you're trying to shift over to this because you've been doing original artist work for that, you really need those icons to, uh, to, to represent what, what they meant for you. And, uh, yeah. Undo. Uh, I don't, I don't know if does GIMP, GIMP must have layers too, right? Cause this thing had every artist I saw in the demos was using the layers features. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it does. Yeah, uh, GIMP has layers, Inkscape has layers. Um, you can move stuff up and down in the stack. And uh, it's great that this does too, because some of these drawing applications do not. Again, I'm not a... I'm not, a, I, I'm not an expert in this area, but the ones that I have used, you know, it's funny because my daughter uses um, uh, Microsoft Paint all the time to do all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just, it makes me cringe when she does that. I'm just like, no, don't do that, you know? <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it, whatever, it works for her. But, you know, this, if I got this, um, I think I'm going to install this at home and, and show her this because I think, you know, she's very creative, does a, a lot of drawings and stuff. I think she's really going to like this. Very good. Well, we can sit and chat here a lot about more about this, probably, because this is an area that I'm always just an amateur at, and you seem to be slightly above amateur on that, so that's really cool. But uh, we do have other shows coming up, and I want to talk about those real quickly. Uh, we do have uh, a few guests. Uh, no new guests since the last week's show. I've been trying to send stuff out, trying to move. Uh, that We've got still three open slots in Q1, and so hopefully we'll fill those before it comes up. But all the next, next three weeks are all taken care of. Uh, Geo Paparazzi. It's a very fast, qualitative engineering uh, uh, system for her geological survey and helping with OpenStreetMap, doing mapping. So this is a sort of GPS data turned into uh, useful data uh, by good software. Uh, SOGO, or SOGO, I don't know the, which, how to pronounce that. It's got three capital letters and a lowercase letter, which is sort of weird. Yeah, it's Groupware Server with a focus on scalability and open standards. And then coming up shortly after that, we have Moheed, which is a water modeling system. You feed in your data, you uh, and then you run water through it. And it knows how to do every kinds of water, all sorts of cool water, and doing all the complex mathematics that goes behind that. Looks pretty fun, probably some video demos on that one as well. On the very short list, we still have Docker. I just e emailed them yesterday, so we're trying to get the dates. One of those other remaining three dates is going to be taken up by Docker. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, if you want to find out who we have coming up, we, there's a big spreadsheet, at a, a link from the homepage at twit.tv slash floss. We have the giant spreadsheet of people who are we're talking to already. Uh, if you have a project that is not on that list, and I will urge you all to do this, because like I said, we I, I try very hard to book every week, and sometimes I don't make it. So uh, let's, uh, well, sometimes it's hard to fill. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so go, please, go to the project leader, have them e email me, Merlin at Stonehenge.com, and we will get them on as quick as we can. We do have a live chat room at, at live.twit.tv while we're taping. Uh, you can follow me at Merlin on uh, Twitter and at Google+. Plus. It's... Uh, Randall L. Schwartz. Uh, I'm going to be at scale in just a couple weeks, so if you're in the Los Angeles area, please uh, stop by. Uh, there's a discount code for scale for our FLOSS listeners of FLOSS. If you haven't registered already, you get 50% off. And uh, that's all I want to plug. Uh, Aaron, you want to go ahead and plug something? Yeah, real quick. Uh, you know, obviously you can uh, follow me on Google+. Plus. I'm Aaron Newcomb on Google+, Plus, and I really like talking to people there. I do respond. I do read everything that people comment on my posts or start conversations with me. So, uh, you know, please hang out with me there. Uh, you can find me here on the Twit Network. I was on All About Android last night. Had a great time uh, with the gang. We were all in person. It was kind of fun. Uh, I'll be doing uh, more reviews for BYB. So I'm going to be doing a review of the Raspberry Pi 2 that just came out this week. Uh, if you're interested in Raspberry Pi, you want stay tuned for that episode coming up in a few weeks um, and the, the big thing that I'd like people to take a moment to think about is if you're in the Bay Area and you want to go to a Maker Faire we're doing a Maker Faire right in Benicia on March 28th um, it's the Benicia Mini Maker Faire and I'm putting uh, that on I'm one of the planners uh, we're working really hard to make this a really cool event so if you consider yourself a maker or just want to be inspired to get more creative or make something or tear something apart and do something with it uh, you want to go to Benicia Mini Maker Faire uh, you can just look that up online BeniciaMakerFaire.com um, for all the details Sounds real cool. All right. Well, we're just running out of time. I can tell because we're listening to that music there in the background. So I'm going to say again, see you all next week on Floss Weekly.